In this lesson, we'll learn the basics of the material editor and how we can apply materials to our geometry. So we're going to start out by opening up our material editor. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this out just a little bit because we're going to be working primarily inside of this material editor. And the material editor is basically an interface all on its own. We have a couple of different things. Let's kind of break this down into sections. We have our menu bar up here at the top. We also have our tools that are available to us with materials. We have a material map browser to where we can actually browse through the different materials and the different maps that are available inside of 3ds Max. We have our viewport of our materials where we can actually see our different materials that we're creating and all the different nodes that those are connected to. We have a navigator because we may have scenes to where we have just hundreds of different materials and we want to be able to get to those very quickly so we can switch to different uh, points in our view by using our navigator. And then we have our material parameter editor where we can actually adjust the settings on our materials. So with just that basic idea of the interface of the material editor, let's go ahead and move on to how we can actually create materials. Now there are three things or three steps to creating materials inside of 3ds Max. The first thing that we need to determine is the material type that we're going to be using. So in this case our material types are right in here. So let's go ahead and drag in just a standard material. So I'm going to drag it into my view and it pops up right here. And let's go ahead and double click anywhere right on this. And you'll notice that our materials uh, show up in our material parameters. Now you'll notice that we have this, uh, this material showing up in our navigator as well. Okay. Now the second thing that you need to determine after you've determined your material type is the shader type. So we have a standard material and we can actually change the type of shader that is using. Okay. Now a shader is basically how light is going to react on this specific material type. Okay. So if I change this from blend let's say I go to Fong, this is going to change some options for me. This is going to change how light will react to this material. Okay, so now after I've determined my material type and I've determined my shader type, if it's available, I can determine my map type if I want to do that. So I can actually come down in here into my maps and apply any maps if I need to. Now for right now we're not going to do that just yet. We're going we're gonna to save that for another lesson. So what I want to discuss is how we can change the color of our material and then also how we can change the glossiness and specular level of our material. So let's go ahead and change our color. So we have this Fong basic parameters and we have a diffuse color and we have the swatch and we'll just click on it and we're going to change this to an orange color. Okay, We'll hit OK on this and now we can go ahead and adjust our specular and glossiness. So we have specular highlights just below um, our color here in our Fong basic parameters and let's adjust the specular level. Now specular level is basically how much light can be absorbed onto this material. I'm going to double click on this swatch here so this expands so we can see this a lot easier. So if I adjust the specular level you'll notice that light is beginning to gather on this material. So light will hit this, gather and reflect off of this material. Now glossiness will determine how that light reflects. So if we have a low glossiness, light will spread along this material. 
if we have a high glossiness, light will bounce directly off of this material. So we have something like a pool ball or a billiards ball, if you uh, don't understand that terminology. And if we take this down, this is more along the lines of maybe a, fl a flat gloss tabletop. Something that's not glass, it's maybe got like a plastic color to it, so light just spreads across it. It doesn't really bounce. Okay, so if we've got our glossiness turned all the way down, but we have a lot of specular level, we'll take this down a little bit because that's really bleeding. So we'll take it down to like 35 if we were wanting to do some sort of type of plastic, a flat, flat base color or something like that. Now what I want to do is actually take my glossiness back up and take my specular level up because I want this to be like painted glass or painted ceramic or something like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of move this off here. Now I know that this is going off of the video and we can't really see this, but I'm done working in the rest of the view and I'm going to actually just use these tools right here. Now what I want to do is apply this material, this orange material, to my teapot. So with this teapot selected, we can actually use this Assign Material to Selection. So once I do that, you'll see that that has been applied to our teapot. Now what I also want to do is go ahead and apply this same material to this sphere. So we'll hit Apply. And now if we go ahead and do a render, we have this material on top of our teapot and our sphere. Now I applied this to both the objects on purpose because if I do any changes to this, let's say I decide, okay, I want this sphere to be white. I don't want it to be this orange color. Let's say that I go ahead and decide, okay, let's change the color of this. And I'm thinking that I'm going to change the color on my sphere. What this will actually do, if I change this to white, and I go back to my scene, it's changed both the teapot and the sphere. So you want to remember that if you're wanting two different materials, you need to make two different materials. So anything that has this material applied to it will be changed in your scene. Okay, So let's go ahead and let's just drag another standard in here. And let's change this diffuse color to that orange. And we'll hit OK. And let's double click on this new one here. I meant to keep this one white, but either way. So let's make sure that we double clicked on this one. Let me bring this up here. And let's change our diffuse color to that white. I don't know why I changed that there. And we'll hit OK. And adjust our specular level and our glossiness. And let's go ahead and apply this to our sphere. So with it selected, let's hit this Assign to Selection. And now we've got our orange teapot and we've got our white sphere. Now if we wanted to go ahead and apply some different materials to uh, these walls, we could do that as well. So you know, if we wanted to create something like maybe a flat white for those walls, we could do that. So we're just going to go ahead and create another standard and I'll just change the color of this one make sure you double click it and we'll change this to white and we'll do assign to selection but we need to make sure that we have the walls selected and we'll hit assign so now we've got this and let's say we wanted to make this this tabletop a, a certain color so let's change this to like a a really glossy black or something like that. So I'll do another standard and I'll go to diffuse and I'm not going to make it completely black, I'll make it like a dark gray and then give it a high gloss and specular level and now let's go ahead and assign this to our tabletop and I'm done with my material so I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's render this really quickly and this is a very depressing color with all these different uh, 
tones instead of actual color. Let's actually bring our light up here. So this is where we're getting into uh, to adjusting for our render. So let's adjust that light. So let's just select it. And let's take our multiplier up. Let's go back up to 1 and see what we have there. Now let's go ahead and do a render. And let's actually make sure we're in our perspective and do a quick render. And there we go. This is a little bit better. Uh, we might change the color up maybe later on or something like that. But, but what we've got is just the basics of materials. And what we're going to do now is discuss texture maps in the next lesson.